I'm Steven Morabito. Welcome to my crash course in drum brushes. These are drum brushes. They're retractable. Um, I like the retractable ones because they stay a little bit more protected than non-retractable ones when I take them out to gigs and put them in my bag. Um, I like to use the uh, traditional grip. Uh, it seems to me that when you're using this horizontal plane, it's more natural for the elbow to go around in the circle patterns that I'm about to demonstrate. Okay, let's check out a pattern for the drum brushes for a shuffle. Here we go. One, two, a one, two, three. Let's take a look at a few swing patterns. Uh, Ed Thigpen uh, made some of the patterns uh, very memorable in some of his, in almost all of his recordings. He was a master on the brushes and a master um, at this particular pattern. Let's check it out. Let's check out a nice swing pattern. So we can play this pattern uh, staccato or we can add a more legato, softer, smoother feel to it. Something like this. This next pattern has um, a very uh, unique feel. Um, you can go fast or slow. It's very smooth uh, once you get the hang of it. This one has a cut time or double time feel. The brushes are really handy when you're asked to play a ballad. Let's check out some patterns for ballads.
Okay, we're gonna do a five four pattern. Uh, here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, Some Latin patterns may be intended to mimic uh, cabasa like this. Here's a nice little pattern for Latin tunes. Ready? A one, a two, a one, two, three. Let's check out a couple of patterns in three-quarter time. The first one is going to have a more staccato sound. Notice my left hand, I'm using my elbow. My right hand, I'm tapping in the three quarter time pattern. I'll slow it down for you. Here's a three quarter time pattern for brushes that's more staccato. Ready? One, two, and three, one, two, and three. Let's check out a more legato type of three-quarter time pattern. Here's a three quarter time pattern that's more legato. A one, two, and three, a one, two. Let's talk about fluttering the brush. Uh, these wires on these brushes, they're very springy, right? So you can see that they have lots of flexibility in them. You can get a variety of different brushes with different types of uh, wires and different uh, materials like 
uh, whisk broom materials and plastic and, and all kinds of brushes out there, I suggest you explore as many as possible. Um, I like these because they just feel right to me. They have a really nice level of uh, flexibility. Using the rim of the drum and the handle of your brush, you can cause the brush wires to flex. And if you hold your brush at the right angle, you may just get some sounds out of the head. Sometimes there'll be two, sometimes three, sometimes four. Experiment with this technique. You'll get it down to where you can place the brushes on the rim of the drum for a really nice fluttering action. You'll get to a point with the fluttering technique that you'll be able to do consistent doubles and triples. Brushes sound great on the cymbals. Let's check out some techniques, some little things that you could do to add some sparkle and brilliance to your performance. Uh, I like to take the brush and do a lateral movement right on the bell. You can go down towards the edge for less of a resonance. I like to uh, flutter the brush vertically on the edge of the symbol. So I'm gonna place my brush as such. Fluttering there. I like to use the butt end of the brush. Uh, sometimes a brush will have a little rivet at the end and you can use that to get a nice bell sound or, or scrape the, the cymbal. Sometimes you can turn the butt end uh, on its side and use, use that edge. I like to flutter the brush on uh, hi-hats, get a lot of cool sounds like that. So having this horizontal plane as a tool can help create um, not only more textural sounds, but it can help develop uh, some independence, um, especially when you consider the paradiddle. 
The power diddle is a great exercise for drummers. Basically, it's so right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. You can get a good power diddle going with the brushes because the brushes have a little bit of that bounce to them. You can also add that horizontal plane in there and get a totally different exercise and feel. A great exercise is to go from the staccato paradiddles to the legato paradiddles and back again, kind of like this. Seven eighths pattern, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is a great little symbol technique for the end of any song. <laughs> 